Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Digital Black Magic channel. My name is Christoph Esch and today I'm going to show you what happened to the old machine which I got that had Windows Vista on it. I'm talking about the Dell machine, the Dell Inspire 530. The plan is to hand it over to a young man who is in the middle of his school education and is in need of a computer to do exactly that. In order to achieve that, it is required for him to have a recent Windows on the machine. As you recall, I installed Windows 7 to get rid of the data previously on the system. Please follow the info card for more information on that. So the next step is to install Windows 10 on the old machine. It should work fine, but I don't know yet. So without further ado, let's get started. This is a known computer, the Dell Inspiron 530. As you may recall, it contains Windows 7 as of now. In order to have it some kind of future proof, it is required to have Windows 8 or Windows 10 in it, because Windows 7 has support for another year and that's it. I did download the Windows 10 installation media provided by Microsoft using Microsoft's media creation tool. I used the USB key to create the installation media. Unfortunately, this old computer does not boot off of this media. That is why I'm going to install Windows 10 using the existing Windows 7 installation. I have never done that before, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open the USB key and will run the setup off of this media. Now we are prompted with security advice stating that there might be some changes in the computer and we say yes to do changes to the computer because we want to install Windows 10. We don't have an internet connection right now so we can't download any updates. I never did this installation before. The usual way I do is I restart the computer using the media itself. Unfortunately, I don't have a product key right now, so I can't install Windows 10 using the Windows 7 installation. In this case, I'm going to use the Windows Media Creation tool to create a DVD containing the latest version of Windows 10, and then I will restart the computer using the boot options and select the CD DVD as a boot option. After that, the Windows 10 installation will work just fine, but it will use the DVD instead of the flash drive. The German language settings are fine, so we click Weiter for Continue, and then we click Jetzt installieren for Install Now. Now we are where we used to be, but now we have the option to skip the product key by selecting I don't have a product key or in German Ich habe keinen Produktschlüssel. I'm not 100% sure that Windows 10 will work on this machine. Therefore, it would be unwise to put a product key here. This is the same situation as with the old Samsung laptop I featured in another video. As addition, I select Windows 10 Pro for professional. We have to accept the license agreement of course, after reading it. Then we need to select the second option, User Defined Installation. This gives us the option to erase all the partitions of the previous windows, and that is what I want to do. The sole purpose of the Windows 7 installation was the deletion of the data. Therefore, I'm going to erase all partitions created by this Windows 7. After the deletion of all partitions, we have two blank hard disks. 
one with 750 gigabytes of space and one with 500 gigabytes of space. The first disk pre-selected is a 750 gigabyte disk and that is what I'm going to select as my installation drive. Leaving the dialog with Vita for continue. After the copy of the data, which follows now, the setup will be almost done. Now we can select the region, which is Germany or Deutschland. The keyboard layout will be German. There is no need for a secondary keyboard layout, so this can be skipped. Same goes with the network settings, because I don't have a network cable plugged in as of now. The username of this computer will be admin. I select the password, but unfortunately I will have to answer questions to reset this password in a case of emergency and I don't want to or just can't answer these questions right now because it's not my computer. So I leave the password for the admin blank. This is Cortana. I don't need her right now. Again, this is not my computer, so who am I to judge? I will, though, disable all tracking capabilities of Microsoft Windows and all the data transmission I can disable. Again, if it is needed, it can be enabled when it is needed. The setup now works its magic. What is left to do is to install AMD's driver for the graphics card that is installed in the computer and the chipset drivers provided by Intel. I've downloaded both files to a USB key that is already included in the system. The system is an old system, so it only has USB 2 available. Therefore, I'm going to copy the files before I execute them. Starting with the graphics card, the Intel 2 will require internet and we don't have that yet. Windows can't determine if the file is legit, so that's why the error occurs. I know it was downloaded from AMD's website, so I execute it. After that, I get the warning that we're installing a driver that is going to change the computer. And since the graphics card needs this driver, I'm going to change the computer with that driver. Now the AMD driver is going to be extracted and we just have to follow the instructions on the screen. The region is Germany once more and the express installation is just fine for our purposes. All we need to do now is Sit back and wait. The flickering of the screen is due to the change of the graphics card's drivers. What's left now is a reset of the system. And the graphics installation is Done. In order to set up the Intel drivers correctly, we need the network connection to the internet. 
But first, we're going to search for Windows updates because most Intel drivers for the old machines are also available at Microsoft's Windows Update process. In order to start the update, you can go to the control panel and then systems or update or just type update into the search bar in the taskbar. After that, you click on search for updates. In German, nach update suchen. A number of updates are available. After installing these, the system requires another restart. As there are updates for updates available, it is a good procedure to do the update search once again. The system now has all the updates installed. Now it's time to perform the Intel driver check. This tool can help you find Intel drivers which are missing on your system. We will have to agree to the license agreement, but we don't want to participate on the survey. In the aftermath of this video, I found out that I didn't really use the tool. To find out how the tool is really used, please check my video regarding the old Samsung laptop linked in the info card. I'm sorry about that. Up next, I'm going to check the device manager, in German Geräte Manager, to see if we have hardware that misses drivers. And yes, there is a multimedia and graphics device that doesn't work. By the looks of it, it should be the onboard video device, which is overruled by the graphics card that is installed as a dedicated graphics card into the system. I still try to find a new driver by clicking update driver for the device. This doesn't work, unfortunately. According to me, the computer works great. The only thing that is missing right now is the speakers for the audio devices. I have checked that all the microphone and headphone jacks work. So the system is ready to be delivered to somebody who can make good use of it. And that is part of my goal. I wanted to keep it out of the recycle center. Fortunately, this worked. Thanks for watching my video. Please leave a like. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And I hope to see you back again very soon. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.